Okay, uh, so let's try to look at um, total derivatives. Okay, so now um, before I continue, just in case you're new to the channel, uh, make sure to subscribe so that uh, each and every time we upload new content, you'll be notified. We have a lot of exciting content that is coming up. So be sure to subscribe. Yeah, and thanks for joining in. So uh, the whole idea of total derivatives is that um, this will be helping us to find the approximation of some functions, or let me say the volume of a given uh, figure, okay? Um, the volume of a given shape, I may say, let's say a cylinder, let's say a cone or something. Okay, so that is what we are. That is how we are going to be applying our total derivatives. So the main idea of total derivatives is that uh, it's like let's say we are given our z uh, to be equals to uh, let's say it's our f of x comma y, okay? So now, um, if what we have here, our function of z is differentiable at some point, which I'm going to denote as x initial comma y initial. So, um, if you have this function, which is differentiable at that function, we are going to let our dz, okay? We are going to let dz be equals to... Uh, be equals to I'll say partial of z with respect to what with respect to x uh, multiplied by change in x which I'll write as dx okay plus partial of z with respect to y which are uh, by the change in y which I'll denote as dy okay so now this part here you might observe that in some in some textbooks uh, this is written as um, in this form okay this as well written in that form which is simply one and the same thing is that your change in terms of the value of x from the initial initial value that you have to the final value that you have and you're going to be seeing a lot of these as we solve a lot of questions all right so uh this is simply the idea of um the idea of uh total derivatives and you might want to you might you might ask to say what is the dz like what is it all about like what's the dz you know just that question what is the dz so in this case your dz is uh, your dz in the, in this function like in this equation that we have here okay your dz is your dependent variable okay it's your dependent variable then your dx and your dy these are what these are independent variables okay these are independent variables and we're going to understand this in a short while okay so now let's try to so overall this is what you're going to be using okay to find the total derivatives so meaning we just have to have the knowledge of uh, uh, dealing with uh, partial derivatives okay so in this case I'm going to say my dz that I'm looking for the question is saying find the differential dz which is in this case we know that it's equals to partial of z with respect to what respect to x by change in x I'll write it like that so by partial of z with respect to y uh, by change in y okay so now uh, how is this going to be so here I'm not really I'm not really interested in what my change in x and change in y is I'll just leave it like that as an like I'm trying to find it's more like I'll leave it an, as an expression because I'm not really told what my initial value of x is and what my final value of x is and that's a change in x meaning you're changing from one value to another value and of which the question has not indicated for just for the first part if I may say okay so meaning our dz for that function will be equals to the partial derivative of z the function z which is this one with respect to x you're going to get 2x plus 3y remember we are treating y as a constant because I'm differentiating or I'm finding the partial derivative with respect to x okay so I'll say plus then partial derivative of that function with respect to y how is it going to be this is going to be 3x minus 2y by changing what changing y okay this is simply what my dz is equals to nothing more nothing less okay so going to the second question we are told that if x changes from 2 to 2.05 and y changes from 3 to um, 2.96 okay so now what it is is that you have these coordinates you have your two comma three this three that we have right here okay those are our initial points okay those are our initial points I'll say we have uh, two comma three then we have the final points which is two 
0.05 in the X and uh, 2.96 in the Y okay so we say let me indicate these as our initial points okay uh, let me indicate this as our initial points then these are our final points I'll say XF X final and uh, indicate this as our Y final okay so now I'm trying to come up, I'm trying to find the the second question okay and by the way um, before I go any further uh, our DZ this is the expression okay then our change in Z like we it written, uh, being written like that how we are how we are going to come up with it is that we are, there is a formula that we are going to be using uh, or let me say an expression or something so this would be like a uh, change in Z would be nothing but equals to your function F okay that would be your X uh, initial um, or say X initial plus change in X okay comma Y initial plus uh, change in Y okay then I'll say minus F X initial comma Y initial like that this is what you're going to this is what our change in Z is and we need to keep in mind is that uh, our change in Z is approximately equals to what equals to our, um, our DZ so it's more like who, even the question says to say uh, compare the value of DZ and uh, change in Z of course I want to see how related they are in some way if I may say so okay so now uh, to find my DZ uh, I already have this um, I already have this okay so I'll just come and say okay uh, my DZ in this case will be equals to I'll say 2 what's my X my, your X you get your initial value which is your 2 plus your 3 uh, you get your Y which is your 3 changing um, change in X what is your change in X so you observe to say our change in X is nothing but the final is uh, 2.05 initial is a uh, um, 2 of which when you subtract you're going to get uh, 0 0.05 like that then plus you have your 3 you have your 2 here minus 2 then you have your 3 okay then your change in Y is um, is going to be a negative because you are saying are uh, your 2.96 minus 3 uh, which simply gives us a uh, negative 0. Uh, 0. 0.04 okay so when you when you perform the math there okay uh, so when you are going to find that your DZ will be equals to um, so what I have that in the brackets I have like my 2 times 2 uh, that's a 4 plus a 9 which is which is a result of a 3 by 3 that gives me 13 I multiply by 0. 0.05 I get 0 0.65 okay but for this part you observe to say uh, you're going to get a 0 because this will be a 6 and this will be a 6 and you're subtracting that would be a 0 so meaning my, my DZ is 0 0.65 okay so now I uh, want to try to compare what our DZ is to what our change in Z is in that case so that would be like our DZ will be equals to 0 0.65 so I want to try to determine what what this is going to be now okay so these are really close to each other like they are related there's that close relationship in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the values okay so in this case I'm going to say it's my F okay so for this one uh, you don't really need to differentiate anything unlike the DZ so your initial value uh, for for X is a 2 then your change in X is 0 0.05 of which that just makes to makes it to be what 0. Point, eh? that then comma your initial value of uh, of Y is a 3 then you say plus but again you're saying minus 0. Point. remember we found that 0. Point, eh? 0. 0.04 negative 0. 0.04 when you subtract you're going to get the same 2.96 like that then minus then you say um, you have your 2 then you have your 3 there okay so what it is here is that as I said you know you don't need to differentiate anything here we just substitute in the equation that we have so in this case you're going to have your 2.05 squared uh, plus 3 multiplied by 2.05 multiplied by my 2.96 which is my y 
minus my 2.96 squared so I'll say minus open bracket I'll say uh, 2 squared is nothing but a 4 okay plus 3 times 2 so I'll say I have my 3 times 2 times uh, times another 3 wait we say 3 times 2 times 3 that will give us 18 okay 18 minus uh, our 3 squared which is a 9 okay which is a 9 there okay what are we going to get this side so here we are saying uh, 0 point uh, I mean 2 point 2 point 0 5 squared okay I'll say plus 3 times uh, 2.05 okay multiplied by 2.96 what I get is 22.4065 I subtract uh, 2.96 squared what I get is uh, what I get is 13.6449 minus what you get here is that you're going to say uh, is your 4 plus 18 minus 9 what you get is a 13 when you do the subtraction you get what you get your 0 0.6445 of which this is is what we have and remember to say our dz we found what we found 0 0.65 so it's more like your dz was just a rounded version of uh of what we have there of course uh correct to two decimal places and that's simply how we go about that one so for this one we observe that we don't need to differentiate anything you just uh, have to know your ch your change okay your change in x as well as your change in y okay so let's try to look at another example um, this one is a bit different so we are told that uh, the base radius and height of a right circular cone are measured as 10 centimeters and uh, 25 centimeters so in this case my radius is equal to 10 centimeters then my height okay my height is equals to 25 centimeters okay so uh, with a possible error in measurement of as much as 0. Point, so in this case my error in both of them is going to be 0. 0.1 centimeters okay so now how are we going to we are trying to determine uh, we are saying use total differentials to estimate the maximum error in the calculated volume of the cone so now what it is here is that uh, my volume of a right circular um, right circular cone is simply equals to uh, pi r to the second by height divided by three. So what it is here is that uh, this is just the equation uh, or the formula I may say for um, that used for finding the volume of uh, a right circular cone. So what it is is that uh, remember to say volume of a cylinder is equals to pi r squared times h. That's the volume of a cylinder, but in a cylinder, okay, a cylinder whose base radius and the height is equals to a cone whose base radius and the height they are equals to like let's say you have this cone, okay, and you have this cylinder, like that something like that. So if this cone, okay, has the same base radius here. As that's a, uh, as that cylinder there, as well as the height like that. So what you what it is is that the the volume of this uh, cone goes into the volume of that cylinder three times. That's why that's why that you, that's how that equation comes about. Of course, you can go about deriving it, but that's that's not really what we are focusing on at this moment. So now what it is is that uh, this is remember to say we are dealing with dz in the previous question. So in this case that would just be dv. That would be equals to remember to say uh in this case our dv is our dependent variables then our independent variables are going to be like change uh change in r as well as change in h okay so uh this is going to be i'll say partial v with respect to what respect to r by change in r plus partial v with respect to what respect to h by uh change in h okay so this is more like my error that is that would be like my 0. Point, uh, 0. 0.1 that has been given so that would be like your dv will be equals to so the derivative uh, of this formula for volume with respect to r what you're going to get is uh, 2 pi r h divide by divide by 3 like that okay so that would be like your change in r, your change in r plus 
your uh, your derivative of that formula with respect to h that is going to be pi r squared divided by 3 so everything is kept constant so we use the same concept when you're talking about uh, when we are talking about partial derivative you still want the same thing these are partial derivatives anyway so your dv will be equals to um, you're going to say it's your 2 multiplied by your pi okay your radius is what is a 10 so uh, I think to save time uh, I know what my height is my I have a 2 times my radius which is a 10 my height which is 25 I'm getting 500 okay I'll say divide by 3 all right so it's a 2 multiplied by radius 10 times 25 divide by 3 okay so what I end up having is uh, is a 166.67 pi okay but again uh, let me multiply this by 0 0.1 which is my change in error so I'll say 0, by 0 0.1 I'm going to get 16 point uh, 67 16.67 pi like that then I'll say plus I do the same there okay so in this case I'm saying my 10 squared which is a hundred 100 divided by I mean 100 multiplied by 25 do you have a 25 here no we don't have a 25 so it's just our 100 multiplied by 0 0.1 divided by divide by 3 point uh, 3.33 pi okay so now our dv will be equals to uh, we have our 16.67 plus 3.33 what I get is uh, a 20 pi okay it's a 20 pi if you want you can write in terms of what your pi is and you find the exact value but in this case I'll just say okay um, this is my volume and we are dealing with centimeter I'll just say centimeter uh, centimeter cubic centimeter cubic there that is my what that is my DV okay so in case you'd want to try out uh, using your, your change in V you're going to get something that is very close in terms of the value it won't be far fetched yeah so that's how you go about answering that question thank you very much for watching